following last week's real estate market update for February, I got an email from a past client of mine and I also got another comment on the video itself saying, basically asking the same thing. And that's, you know, why hasn't my home sold um, considering the market so strong? And so I thought that would be a great topic to go into for this week. Hi, this is Andrew with the Andrew Smith team at eXp Realty. And in order to do that, I kind of want to break down and look at what I would consider to be the normal process for pricing a home. Um, and then we'll look at some specific information that may or may not apply to you, but is generally what I see in most cases. So again, to preface that, you know, real estate is very, always very local. You know, you can have a red hot market overall, but there could be a neighborhood across town where property is not moving as fast, or you've got one area that is just on fire and another area in another zip code that isn't. So keep that in mind that there's different nuances and things about the market that are always going to take place. And there's markets within markets within cities and within zip codes. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to keep things rather generic, if that's okay. So first, let's look at how most homes are priced. So let's assume that you're using an agent. So the agent will meet with you and you will usually go over a market analysis of some sort. You're going to look at, you know, a few homes that are currently listed for sale. You might be looking at a few that are currently under contract and you will usually look at recent sales as well in order, in order to determine the list price for your home. Now, most commonly, and the way most agents are taught, are to focus in on the closed sales. And the reason for that is that's very similar to what an appraisal does. When you have an appraisal done, the first thing that the appraiser looks for is model match sales within your same neighborhood. The difference between an appraiser, though, and what most agents will do is the appraiser makes adjustments and most agents don't. And here's what I mean by that. Even though a model match within your same neighborhood is going to be given the greatest weight in terms of value, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're comparing apples to apples in all cases. Yes, the bedrooms, baths, and square footage are the same, but apart from that, there could be some substantial differences between the two homes. You know, in some of the markets that I work in, especially the Southern California market, you can have a street where on one side of the house or on one side of the street, the homes have a view. And on the other side of the street, they have a large slope in the backyard. Their model matches, but they're not worth the same. So it's important to keep that in mind. So even though you may have a model match, it's important to really take a look at that property and determine, are you comparing apples to apples? Is the location the same? Are the, is the condition the same? Are the upgrades the same? Does one have a view, one not have a view? Does one have a pool, one not have a pool? Are the garages the same? Things like that. So second thing that you're going to look at is once the property is actually listed and up for sale, it's really important to pay attention to what the market is telling you. Because again, no matter what anyone thinks, a home is only worth as much as a buyer is willing to pay for it. And if you are in an area where the market's moving pretty good and you have a home up for sale and you're not getting any showings whatsoever, then the buyer pool, the market itself, is rejecting your home before they ever come to see it. And that could be because it's either presented very poorly online, although that isn't usually the case, it usually comes down to price. It means your price is not even in the ballpark of where the market believes your home should be. Now, if you have a home that is actually up for sale and you're getting showings, you're having plenty of showing activity, but no one's making an offer, that's usually an indication that you're within the ballpark on price, but there's something else. There's something there to where the market is not seeing your home 
as a good enough value in order to sell right away. Now, I want to you know place some caution here though that if you've got a lot of showing activity and your home has been on the market a week, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong. If the normal days on market for your area is 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, it doesn't really matter what that number is. But if you're seeing good solid showing activity and you're still within the average days on market that's normal for the area, there's not really any reason to panic or be concerned because it just may be that the right buyer hasn't come through your home yet. If you're beyond that standard or that normal days on market, then you've got to start asking some questions. And one of the ways that you get out in front of this up front, take care of it first, is to make sure that your agent is getting feedback on all of the showings that you are having. Now, you're not going to get 100% response from everyone, but you are going to get a, a response from quite a few of them. And the answers that you get are very insightful. They're, they're gold. We usually ask a series of questions. What did your clients think of the house? How would you rate the condition? What did you think of the interior? What did you think of the exterior? What did you think of the price? Are your clients considering making an offer? We usually only use four or five questions, but when we ask those, we generally get honest feedback. I myself and my team, we don't filter it. Whatever we get, the seller gets. So it's not our opinion, it's what's actually coming back. And having that insight into what buyers are actually thinking so that you can make the adjustments necessary to actually get your home under contract is key. So if you have a home that's up for sale, hopefully these tips will help you. Or if you have a home that you're planning on putting up for sale, please keep these in mind and make sure that you have the right game plan in place to know when and if adjustments to your price are necessary. So hopefully that helps. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to share my wisdom or advice or whatever it is that you may want to call it. But I've been doing this a very long time now. And uh, these inform you know the information I'm sharing with you here has proven to be true in all markets we have served over the years.